Good day, everyone. Hey, good morning. Just want to confirm, uh, is, uh, is my mic coming through loud and clear? Yeah, for, for, the, for, the, for the most part. Thank you. Hey, hello, everybody. Good morning. So I just put the link to the the attendance list for today into the group chat. So if everyone can just check in the attendance there. Let us know if you have an update or not. If you're new or haven't joined these meetings before, uh, you can just put uh, no update next to your name in the attendance if you don't want to be pinged during the check-ins. Otherwise, if you're new or if you have something uh, to bring up during the check-ins, feel free to mention that in the uh, brackets to the right of your name in the attendance list. Yeah. I'm not the only one. <laughs> Good day, sir. I guess newest and youngest member feel free. I feel Yeah. Chase, we're able to hear your audio, by the way. Yeah, there's a there's a hot mic. That happens a lot in this climate. Yeah, I'd be almost more surprised not to see it at this point, frankly. OK, I think we've got a few minutes to, we've already given enough time to hit critical mass. so. Could I request uh, any scribes, any volunteers to take meeting minutes today? Uh, let's see from- I'll do it. Uh, the link for attendance here, I'll paste. Oh, thank you. Ah, uh, this is Vinay, yep. Vinay, all right, great. Yeah. Thank you, Vinay. And do we have a second? All right, we've got- we got Vinay, and if anyone else wants to also take uh, meeting minutes as best you can, so much the better. Thank you. And sorry, um, uh, Matthew, uh, you did you want me to take it in the uh, in the notes in the in your in your table, right? Um, if if you find it's more helpful or if it works for you, great. If it's slowing down or impeding note taking, feel free to just put them serially beneath. It's kind of an experiment right now, just because if we have two scribes, I thought it might be easier to do it side by side yeah. instead of two serialized documents. But um, whatever works best for you. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. So, got your attendance check in, just see if anyone has any updates. Uh, let's see. So the points I have here, I have Michael, Michael, and it noted Harbor. Uh, will you be doing the presentation today, Michael? Yeah, so it's not necessarily a presentation, uh, but we'll talk about uh, the Harbor items. I mean, I have a presentation ready if you guys want to know more about Harbor, so that's not a problem. Uh, but I want to know what you need to do to 
figure out how to uh, initiate the review from six security for Harbor's graduation bid. So uh, if we, uh, I, I mean, I have a lot of content ready for you guys. Uh, if you also want me to present, I, uh, I can also have a PowerPoint deck. Sure, there's only one or two other updates and I believe it's one or two new members. So if it's all good with you, I'll just power through those other check-ins there and introduce the new members if they want. And then we'll go on to your update and then segue straight into your presentation if that works. Well, one, one thing I do wanna mention here, so sorry, this is Justin Kapos, I'm the security assessment facilitator. Are we doing this, uh, are any of the chairs or anybody, uh, I guess Dan's on the call here, um, are we doing effectively an assessment as part of this or uh, for Harbor or are we just, uh, are we going through a different process? It sounds like uh, uh, Michael is wayfinding and we're pre-assessment. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Michael. Yeah, I mean, I looked at the process that was on the ticket, uh, sorry, on the issue uh, type for the security assessment. So I was here uh, maybe three weeks ago. So we talked about that at that time. We produced a documentation that was asked by SIG Security. Um, and uh, I guess now we're at the point where um, you guys can ask clarifying questions. You can do the initial review uh, and this discussion. And then someone, I assume, will be assigned to do a deep dive into Harbor. So we haven't gotten to that, who that person is yet. And I don't know what needs to happen before that gets that, that happens. but. Uh, from a hardware standpoint, I'm okay to follow whatever process works for you. Yeah, I, I just, um, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because we, as far as I can tell, we don't have like an, I'm, I'm looking for now, but I don't see like an issue for this. There's nothing in our queue to do this, uh, to do like an assessment. And I, I don't like, I think it'd be great to hear about all of this and everything, but, um, I also want to make sure that if, um, because we're going to have to get a team together that's going to have to go through a bunch of this process. And maybe Dan just posted something that made it clear that I'm wrong about this. Um, but uh, no, no, we, this is just, just, just a uh, recently created issue. So uh, just looking at it. Got it. Okay. So, like, this once issue we, hasn't been ingested yet. Got it. Okay. So once we have like our lead security reviewer, our other security reviewers, all these other people, then we're going to have to go through a process that is going to have some similarities with what you're proposing to do today. Um, so I, I'm just saying that I'm more bringing this up because, um, you know, I can under, I, I think it'd be very understandable if um, three weeks from now we asked you to go through effectively the same talk you went through today with some minor tweaks and you were like, hey, I think it'd be a very understandable reaction to be like, hey, we, we went through basically the same thing before. Um, but the, the fact is, is that since we haven't had a chance to like, go through the document, we don't have lead security reviewers, we haven't done any of this stuff, we're sort of not prepared to ingest um, this presentation, have the intelligent questions and things that we'll need to uh, need to have for that. So um, I, I'm very fine with being kind of a an intro and for you to talk as much as you want. Um, but we, we might need an additional step later and um, that, that we wouldn't need had this been done the other order. So um, where is Harbor in? Sorry, uh, where is Harbor in the queue that you have right now, Justin? Um, today? So, yeah, um, so there's a queue with, hold on a sec here. The security assessment queue, we have Spiffy Spire, Cloud Custodian, and Progress. A lot of this has changed slightly with, uh, um, with the uh, coronavirus changes that have happened recently. We have Dragonfly and Falco that are technically further along, but once again, they may or may not be actually ready to progress. And um, in fact, you can go, I can, I'll post this in chat in case anyone is curious. Link. Okay, thank you. So um, Dan just sent you a, a link to our queue. Uh, in a normal non-coronavirus, everything proceeding normally, everyone around sort of world, um, it's 
probably fairly likely that we would in fact have already um, completed the assessments that are in progress. And, and uh, then you would go into the state where you're either in the block state because we don't have the right reviewers or whatever else, um, or you would be in the backlog. So it feels like you're trying to move this quickly, which obviously is something that we would like to have happen too. And um, once it's to a state where there's nothing blocking, it moves into uh, either backlog or in progress, depending on what's happening. Um, but I think, you know, you've, it, it should be a fairly, um, to give a more realistic answer, it should be a fairly fast process once we've identified the people and done everything else. But somehow I missed this initial issue. And so I haven't, um, I haven't been aware, I haven't been wrangling people. Um, maybe that's part of what we can do on this call too. If you'd like, is that after we have um, our facilitator go through and, and run the normal meeting, we could have a really brief um, like Harbor presentation, maybe like 15 minutes or so just to give a flavor of the project. And then I can try to, we can try to wrangle people to participate in the security assessment. Um, and then the expectation would be in three, four weeks ish, um, we might have you go through and do the actual like uh, real presentation. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I wish I had known that because I was here on the first week of March, I will put it in the queue right away or at least create the issue then. Uh, we waited to create the issue until we completed the entire document that you guys were asking for. Uh, Justin, this is it's okay. Uh, Justin, this is asked. Just a quick clarification. So, this is Harbor trying to get a recommendation from Six Security for graduation, and I think we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago. There's a distinction between that process and the security assessment process. And what I understood from Erica and Justin Cormack was that this is supposed to be a very lightweight process. So the project wouldn't necessarily go through the entire exhaustive security assessment. That, that's what I understood last time. So I'm just a bit confused. I mean, there's, there's no official requirement at present from security for projects to go through security assessment for any particular status because we haven't, SIG security has not made that requirement yet. Um, but obviously, um, you know, I, um, I mean, Harbour has said it would like to go through this process um, and they've opened the issue and they, and it would make sense to do it before graduation as part of the due diligence if they want to. If they don't want to, they could go ahead and go and try and get a graduation without doing that. I think they have, there's an yeah. option, but I mean, I think it would, um, I, I mean, I, I still see it as being a valuable thing to, do for the graduation process if they not required. I agree. Yeah, I think this is going to be the most uh, effective way for us to um, you know, provide that due diligence um, and the most comprehensive way. But um, you know, if uh, you know, Michael, if uh, that ends up uh, you know slowing or blocking um, you know your timeline. Um, you know, please feel free to identify that and, and we will, uh, you know, look for ways to, um, to unblock it with the consideration that, um, you know, JJ's sick, uh, and, and stuck in India, Sarah's, uh, sick and stuck in Boston. Um, I'm doing okay now. Um, you know, everyone's dealing with, uh, uncertainty and crisis. So um, we're not going to, uh, you know, try to get in, in the way of things, but, you know, everyone's dealing with, um, you know, a uh, black swan event that uh, is, uh, you know, making everything uh, a bit harder. Yeah, no, I mean, I, un I understand all the different things that are happening. Um, ultimately, Harbor needs a thumbs up from SIG Security for graduation. So whatever it requires, whatever documentation or whatever process you guys want to follow in order for you guys to give the thumbs up, uh, we can do that. 
I think it'd be very useful for, for you guys to go through your six security items now, and then maybe after that, give me a, a few minutes to talk about what we've done for Harbor. And maybe that will make it clearer in terms of what process you feel should we follow to, uh, to move to that either thumbs up or thumbs down type of thing. Okay. Sounds great. Uh, so Justin, this is Saravanan here. Is it mandatory that if a project needs to be moved to a graduation, it has to go through our security assessment? If so, do we have a clear cut requirement? What, are, what the process should look like so that vendors or solution providers who are trying to come in, they have a clear understanding that, okay, I have like 10 steps that I have to strictly follow, whether it meets all the 10 or it didn't meet it. So is it something transparent to the vendor or the solution provider or who is building or engineers too? Uh, so I'll assume you mean me when you say Justin with this. Um, so the, the short answer for what you're asking is no. Um, it's not formally required. And in fact, we have intentionally in many cases here decided not to make a lot of this super, super formal at this point because um, we're still going through a process where we're trying to figure out what the formal process should precisely be. And so these first five security assessments that we're doing where there's a lot more latitude with the people doing the assessments than is likely to be the case um, for assessments that come later in the process. Uh, because we don't want, the last thing we want is there to be a bad process or a useless process or an onerous process uh, for no good reason. So um, you're correct in saying, you know, if, if there's a, um, one would be correct in criticizing the process for not being formally specified, but I feel like that's a necessity at this point in order to stop um, us from being unnecessarily bureaucratic. So um, yeah, I'll say that. And then uh, the chairs, uh, I, I will also just say that they definitely have the latitude to uh, look at a situation with something like Harbor and say, hey, this assessment process is going on too long and we can't get the right people and whatever else. And we don't think that's the right way to go. So, um, you know, but uh, in, in my role, I'm just trying to get the people together to do the best assessments we can. And really, I think the end goal of where everyone realizes, we, you know, everyone seems to think we should be in the not too distant future is to really try to have everything have an assessment. So um, I would definitely agree that we um, should be looking at projects that are going to graduate and, and um, especially things that have, you know, uh, would have serious security ramifications if there's a problem and uh, probably be uh, weighing in with our, our thoughts as a group. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. With that said, then I believe we'll just wrap up the check-ins and then we'll set aside uh, with 10, 15 minutes be good, Michael, for the presentation you have in mind, or will that be deferred to another time? No, 10, 10, 10 minutes should be fine. Uh, when, depending on the Q&A that you guys have, I think we should be good. 10, okay. 15 minutes is great. Great. So I'll set a hard stop afterwards or 15 minutes for that, and then we can wrap up with any PRs that require check-ins or chair approval. Okay. So the only uh, thing I have, I think, as an extra update, we have a new member today, Payam. Do you want to take a second to introduce yourself? Sure. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Payam. Um, I come from the uh, DSP world uh, as well as enterprise world. Um, I've done a lot of uh, advanced networking and security, uh, both on infrastructure and application. Uh, and recently, um, I'm the senior uh, SaaS security architect at Infoblox, which is a, a DDI-based uh, company. Um, uh, yeah, um, I'm usually around. Uh, so if you guys need anything or have any questions, hit me up. Thank you. Thank you, Pam, and welcome. All right, then, on to presentations. I, unless there's any topics anyone wants to bring in for check-in, I don't see any written down in the attendance. I just had one very small thing. It's just in, go on, okay. I, I'm, I've agreed to do the TAC diligence for Spiffy Spire project, so I'm gonna, um, so I'm gonna be going through that. 
um, starting shortly. I think there's a couple of one minor thing to wrap up in Sig Security, but otherwise it's ready for, due, for TSC diligence. Okay, thank you, Justin. All right, with that said, so pass the mic your way, Michael. All right, cool. Um, let me uh, share my screen as well. Um, but uh, essentially, let me give you start a little bit to talk about Harbor. So, um, so Harbor is a registry that's been incubating in CNCF for about a year and a half right now, and uh, it started at VMware and donated to CNCF about uh, about nineteen months ago. Excuse me. Um, when we kind of look at uh, the Harbor from a from a high level standpoint. It is really uh, an artifact repository for all your cloud native assets. So we enable users to secure their images with role-based access control. We enable users to scan images for vulnerabilities, and then we can sign images as trusted. We use Nodary for the signing of the images. So, um, and then for the scanning for vulnerabilities, up to the current version of Harbor, we have been shipping with Claire as the built-in batteries included a vulnerability scanner. But with our previous release, Harbor 1.10, we added an extensible framework to be able to support any pluggable scanner out there. So we started supporting Anchor Enterprise and Engine, as well as Trivi. And with the next release of Harbor uh, that's coming up uh, in April of 2020, we will ship with Trivi as the built-in batteries included uh, vulnerability scanner. When we look at kind of the, the key areas that Harbor enables, uh, we enable security and compliance, performance, interoperability. We provide our users a consistent image management for Kubernetes. Kind of looking at, and I guess this works better if it's in present mode, sorry about that, folks. Uh, when we're looking at, you know, why should people run their own registry? I have a few reasons. When you're looking at it from a security and compliance perspective, which is something that's very important to you, we enable them to have a comprehensive policy that can be applied across all the projects and all the images that they have under management. We enable them to have registry and data ownership because you can install Hubbard within your own data center or in the public cloud, but within your own account. And we enable you to have identity federation with built-in multi-tenancy. So you can have multiple federated identities brought into Harbor, where Harbor owns the RBAC of the users, but you get to define uh, the identity. So you can bring your LDAP accounts or your Active Directory accounts. Um, then, Kind of looking at some of the features that enable this, we have vulnerability scanning, like I mentioned earlier, using uh, today Claire, Anchor, Trivi, uh, DoSec, and uh, really yesterday we started talking with Sysdig, and the Sysdig vulnerability scanner will be enabled into Harbor within the next few weeks as well. We have the concept of CV exceptions. We allow an, an, a user to define exceptions for CVs. So for example, a CV was published yesterday and you haven't been able to patch all your images yet, should you block your images from being pulled to a Kubernetes cluster? Maybe you wanna add an exception that's time bombed for the next two weeks, so it gives you enough time to fix uh, and patch your applications. We do image signing with Nodary. We enable you to define quotas so you can control how much storage is being used. We have retention policies, so you can expire images that uh, based on your compliance policy of your organization. And like I mentioned earlier, we have YDC and LDAP integration uh, using our RBAC and CLI secrets. And the last thing, and this is the kind of the multi-tenancy uh, thing, is we allow you to isolate projects where the entire policy is applied on a per project basis. So you can create a project for Pepsi and a project for Coke. Each of them have their own images and the developers and operators of these two projects can operate independently. At the infrastructure side, we allow you to deploy a harbor on any infrastructure, whether it's private, public, hosted, or edge. We allow you to have data locality so you can own your data, and we're both Kubernetes and Docker compliant. At the scalability and control uh, perspective, uh, as a user, you want to have control access. You want to control the access to your artifacts, 
and you want to replicate resources based on business needs. So Harbor enables that by allowing you to not only have your artifacts to sit on your own infrastructure, but it allows you to replicate to and from Harbor uh, by enabling you to create replication adapters to another Harbor instance, Docker Registry, Docker Hub, Huawei Cloud, AWS, Azure, GCP, Alibaba Cloud, and we're expanding that list pretty much with every release. So Harbor can plug and play with pretty much any other registry out there, and we can push and pull from those registries to basically create what your Harbor environment looks like. And from an automation and extensibility standpoint, as a user, when you're looking at the registry, you want to basically install a registry that's plug and play with a lot of the existing investments that you have in infrastructure and services. And some of those things we already talked about, right? Um, the Identity Federation, that's a big part of that. We have integration with Syslog. We have webhooks, so you can do CICD integration. We have a full uh, REST API that basically has 100% compatibility with all the actions you have in Harbor. And we also have robot accounts for automation. This is kind of our architecture slide. Um, you can see some components are hardware and some of them are not, uh, are basically dependent components. For example, it depend on, um, we have Postgres as our SQL database. Um, we support block file and object storage. Uh, we have Redis for our key value storage. We have Chart Museum for Helm support. However, with Harper 2.0 that ships next month, we're going to be full OCI compliant. So you can see Chart Museum being phased out um, and OCI is how we're going to manage all our artifacts. So we'll be able to manage SINA bundles, OPAs, uh, Helm charts, uh, container images, uh, operators, all of them from Harbor as OCI compliant files. And then we have Notary for signing. The replication providers on the right is what I mentioned. And then the scan providers today, um, th th this slide was created a few months ago. Now we have DUSEC and SysDIC will also be added here as well. Um, I don't want to go too much into the Harbor project overview, but you know, we have lots of users, lots of product implementations, lots of contributing organizations. And if you kind of look at this, this is kind of our money slide. We're over 10,000 GitHub stars or close to 10,000 GitHub stars, 170 contributors, uh, more than 10 maintainers, lots of Twitter followers, lots of blogs and webinars and action happening. And you can see that the project is in healthy state from the number of contributions and that steady stream of contributions over time. Um, the, the extensibility that I mentioned earlier around pluggable scanners, we have a fairly simple API that allows any other company to come in and implement it so that we enable our customers and our users to use a scanner of choice. So if someone has made an investment in Aqua or Anchor or any other company, they can plug in their own scanner so they can integrate with the rest of their processes. Uh, I'm going to go through the roadmap that way in the interest of time we have a tremendous number of customers that are using Harbor in production. And we have a lot of those testimonials in the document that we have prepared for you. Um, so and I, one last thing I want to show you is the CNCF survey results that came in 2019. Um, you can see that Harbor is being used almost by uh, out of, uh, uh, I believe there were 1,337 responses. Uh, Harbor is used almost like 30, 30%, uh, 35% in production by those users. So there's a tremendous customer base within the CNCF ecosystem already. Um, let me exit this really quickly and I'm going to go to the, this is the issue that I filed on your, on your, uh, on your repo. Um, so I may have mistakenly this, I put project security lead, I put the security lead from the Harbor project. Uh, uh, I'm assuming lead security reviewer, someone from your SIG. Um, but we've created the draft document for this review. Um, and we've already done a TOC presentation already in November of 2019. But kind of looking here at the document that we prepared for you. Um, yeah, this is a document, you guys can comment on it or, or read it. Um, and you can see that I tried to create a good uh, timeline of everything that you might have an interest in. We have overview, background, goals, and history of Harbor, uh, intended use cases. We have project design around operations, configuration setup, compliance, 
Then we have the security analysis uh, vectors that you guys wanted, uh, our security development practices that we have, um, roadmap, as well as some items in the appendix. In addition to this, and this is referenced in a couple of areas, we have the, the full-blown uh, document that we have used uh, in our PR for um, uh, for Harbor graduation that has, it's like a 30 plus uh, page document without pictures, <laughs> uh, with pictures is a lot bigger, that contains the entire due diligence for Harbor. And this is also linked from your document, but this is the, uh, like if you, sometimes I've linked to this that includes all sorts of items here. Um, having said that, Harbor has undergone two security penetration uh, reviews so far. One was in August of 2019 by VMware. So VMware paid and uh, hired uh, two, well, they're, they're on our payroll, but we used two security engineers that basically battle tested Harbor. Then we went and got a CNCF sponsored uh, review by Cure53. Uh, they identified about six issues. We fixed them all in the next subsequent review of Harbor. And uh, so undergone two pen tests so far. The second one by Cure53 was across 20 days. Um, that's it. Do you guys have any other questions? I'll, I'll, uh, I want to stay within my 10 minutes here. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Thanks, Michael. It's very disciplined. I've got a question about notary. Um, what types of um, authentication and encryption are being used with that today? And do you plan on using things like GPG in the future to sign? <laughs> Uh, images as well, or is it just all going to be notary? So today it's just notary, um, but what one of the things that we're looking into, uh, notary has one big limitation, like once you sign an image, the URI of the image is embedded into that signature, so the image now is not portable, or if you port it, then you're losing the, the, the ability to uh, to enforce uh, the signing. So Notary V2 uh, has requirements, uh, including the ones from Harbor, to make the signatures portable. So um, we haven't in really looked into a different solution for signing today, uh, but uh, we're open if you guys are, have a specific recommendation that might work better for us to investigate it. Yeah, I, I think uh, from a user perspective, I think what's being asked is, uh, looking into to GPG signing of the images as well and having that support. Okay. Yeah, so we'll, we'll go through and um, I, I think uh, it might be a good idea, Cameron, if you have interest, maybe you can join the assessment team. I can. Or, okay. Um, one other thing I'd like to do is um, I think uh, one thing that's slightly off here a little bit on the um, on the issue that was opened. Uh, so, so first of all, so uh, if Cameron, if you want to go ahead and add yourself to the uh, to the issue, you can just edit the issue at the top and say that you're willing to be, um, I guess either an additional security reviewer or a lead security reviewer potentially, although the yeah. lead security reviewer folks are people that have done an assessment before. Right. Um, the TOC presentation that we're talking about here is actually the presentation of the completed assessment. Um, so I'm gonna uncheck that box. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no problem, Justin. All right. Um, and I also, I'd be happy to be a security reviewer for the project, uh, but I, uh, the hardest, the harder part has been recently getting someone who's uh, able to lead. Uh, is someone else on the call here uh, has participated in an assessment and willing to do so? So I put my name there, I've participated on a recent assessment, but not as a reviewer, but as the author of the assessment, of the self-assessment. I can be part of the reviewer process. This is Saravanan here. Okay. So everyone, I think, should 
uh, feel free to go in and, and add themselves here. Do you all have access or am I the only one who can edit this? I think everyone should be able to go in and edit this. Um, yeah, I, I was able to edit it and I'm assuming everybody should. Yeah. Maybe it's just mine that hasn't. Uh, hasn't I will take a yet. look. Okay, but um, what, what we'll do is we should all go through and, and edit this and add in um, add ourselves if we're willing to be reviewers and then we'll have to go and and see who's technically allowed. Um, we have in the past had uh, situations where um, we've kind of loosened it a little bit. Uh, so we'll we'll have to discuss with the chairs and, and others and see um, what makes sense, like who's qualified, like who's technically qualified and who isn't. Um, but we should be able to hopefully get the team together fairly soon. And then once that happens, then uh, the rest of the process should go fairly quickly, um, especially given that you provide a lot of information. And it'll obviously take us a while to look through it and make sure that it's, it's like, um, we're not missing something important, but in general, the, the place that's taken the longest time has been the organization doing the initial assessment in a reasonable way. Um, or at least that's been a very, you know, that's been one of the biggest blockers. So the fact that you've already taken a good stab at it, it probably will make this process a lot faster. Yeah, so, so, sounds good. That's reasonable to me. And by the way, on the PG, uh, GPG uh, signing, I, I want to add one more thing. We're a CNCF project, and one of the key principles of CNCF is that if there is a CNCF project out there that potentially you can leverage and build better synergies with, um, it's you know preferred. So you know, with Notary being another uh, CNCF project, that's basically part of the reason why why we chose that uh, as 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 a project for um, for for doing our signatures. But we will look into uh, GPG as well. Um, the the last thing and something I forgot to mention earlier, um, in addition to the security reviews we had with the pen testing, uh, we also have a pretty well defined security policy from Harbor that other projects have uh, emulated as well and that's been battle tested. We've issued like six or seven advisories already. Uh, we have a distributors list. We have um, a good way for security researchers to find vulnerabilities and contact us. And a few of them have used it already. So we've, we've kind of uh, ironed out that process uh, months ago and it's been working very well for us. I don't know how important okay. that is to you guys, but uh, that's working very well. Great. So I, I want to you know call out uh, you know everyone's uh, you know been helpful and sort of piling on to uh, enabling process um, and 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 clarifying and, and making sure that uh, you know the learnings we, we from from Michael uh, in uh, facilitating uh, the um, security assessment are um, you know well documented and efficient. Um, you know, something I want to call out, you know, beyond the security assessment is that, you know, Harbor is in, uh, you know, the process of, of graduating um, and, uh, you know, Michael, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you've already received due diligence from uh, SIG Storage and SIG Runtime? Yeah, absolutely. So SIG Runtime gave a thumbs up for graduation. Uh, SIG Storage, uh, everything was okay except one item, and, and I'll explain it here. It, it probably doesn't affect you guys. Uh, Harbor has many components, uh, and, and if you saw in our architecture diagram, two of them was the Helm chart, as well as the, sorry, <laughs> two of them were Postgres database, as well as the Redis. Uh, when we deploy Harbor out of the box, um, using our Helm chart, we install a single instance of Redis and a single instance of Postgres. And the reason why we don't install them as HA is because there's lots of Helm charts out there available if you wanted to install it yourself, either using the Redis operator mm -hmm. or a Redis Helm chart and install it in an HA, we didn't feel like it was worthwhile for us to duplicate that investment. Uh, SIG storage, uh, some members felt that that was a blocker to them and some members said, that's exactly how you should proceed. Batteries included is single instance, but there are readily available home chars for doing an HA deployment. So SIG storage did not give a recommendation for graduation because of that. They said up to the TOC to figure out if this is a blocker or not. But ultimately everything else was good with storage except this one point. 
Got it. So uh, you know, the thing I want to clarify is you know, those that due diligence, those processes, uh, you know, um, still you know, largely ad hoc. Um, you know, uh, Sig Security is you know one of the uh, we we were the sort of original guinea pig of uh, you know the Sig process. We've been around for the longest, and you know have um, our own. Uh, internal processes that we're formalizing, and you know, since we've been uh, guinea pigging for so long, uh, we do tend to you know reflect back into all right, you know, we're improving the process as we go along, and, and inviting folks to, um, to to participate in that. Um, so uh, you know, as we kick this off, uh, kick off the the assessment, I, I think um, it'd be worthwhile for um, you know, Michael and Justin, and I'll, I'll invite Sarah if she's she's well enough to, to participate. Um, to uh, just have a quick breakout meeting to you know level set uh, on uh, due diligence, uh, manage expectations around um, you know the security assessment, length of time on that, and then you know subsequent to um, the uh, the assessment. Um, you know, what are, uh, we're going to, uh, you know, have an additional step, uh, as chairs, um, you know, to, uh, move forward or not on, um, our due diligence and our recommendations to the TOC. Sounds good. Justin, I'll, I'll ping you offline. That way, as you guys finalize the list of reviewers and reviewer helpers, then we can figure out next steps. Maybe we can create a small working group on Slack. Sure. Yeah. And I, and I will also say that um, we won't be like we we certainly out of the assessment wouldn't um, make a real negative recommendation for lacking something like um, for choosing, you know, signature algorithm X over Right. You know, CNCF project Y, unless there's some major security reason to make that change. So, um, you know, Great. it's, uh, we're, we're not, it sounds like, um, you know, maybe some of the process you see in other places where that, that's not our goal here. Our goal is, is really to just do a security threat assessment and to be as neutral about it as we can. Yeah, absolutely. And and by the way, uh, the, uh, we like the process that we went through with you guys uh, a lot as well, because as I was going through the, the checklist and going trying to think about it from a security standpoint, uh, we didn't identify a CV in Harbor by going through it. So, uh, nice. we, and, and we're Amazing. fixing it. Uh, I didn't call it out in the document to see if you guys see it as well. This is more of a, <laughs> a catch the bug type of thing. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, we'll talk about it when we actually meet, but I'll tell you what we identified and how, but when you read my document, you will see it and you will ask okay. and, and, and then I'll tell you, yes, we're fixing this and it'll be there in two weeks. <laughs> Great. Nice. Okay. Thank you, Michael. All right, just going in here. We do not have any issues or PRs for discussion or any noted as requiring chair approval. Are there any PRs that anyone would like to bring up at this time? Okay, crickets. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All good. <laughs> Oh, I sorry. So, but before we get to Dan's, Go I just want to really quickly say I just reposted the link to the issue here for anyone who had volunteered or was potentially interested in being a security reviewer. Please go and edit the edit the area at the top and add your name in. You'll see my name there. That's all. Is it constructive or okay if someone just added on just as say an observer, just engage in the discussions and see how it's done? So they could maybe contribute yes. to the subsequent one? Yeah, that, that's perfectly fine. Okay, thank you. So, sorry, Justin, where uh, are we going? Where do I add my name, for example? Oh, in, uh, okay. into, the doc, into the document? Uh, search for my name where it says one more additional reviewers, one or more additional reviewers, which is near the top. Um, Hey, Justin, are you going to be the lead security reviewer? Because for you, I will probably put your name up on the previous item as the lead security reviewer, right? And then everybody else would add themselves as additional. Well, I'm uh, one of the pro potential problems uh, 
with that is we we kind of need to get more people to do that and i've i've done that before so we're trying to rotate that role out too um if push comes to shove things may have to happen but ideally we would have someone else play that role got it See, and then, and i don't have permissions to edit that in GitHub. yeah I, I think that's the problem okay uh, so please go ahead and just add comments underneath i if you have comments underneath then go ahead and do that and then i will add you Right. Awesome. Thank you. And then the, the one thing that's there is uh, there's a that sign off by two chairs on reviewer conflicts. I'm assuming none of you guys, whoever decides to do the review, does not have a conflict with Harbor or VMware, right? Yeah. What will happen is is that we all have to post a little statement in, basically saying we don't, and then ah, okay, it, got it. Just move got forward. It. So it, it'll just be you'll see a bunch of comments underneath there. Um, yeah. That, that say, no, you don't have any of these kind of conflicts. Got, got. Okay, I guess back to you, Dan. I have um, a question. I seem, seem to have gone uh, into Zoom limbo. Can you hear me? Yep, your audio is coming through. Okay. Um, so as as we're going into um you know the next uh, month or so um you know so uh this morning met with uh, Liz and um uh, Justin Cormack uh, our TOC liaisons um you know we you know had uh, a couple items for you know feedback to the TOC uh you know specifically we're looking for um, you know, we're talking about Harbor as uh, graduating. Uh, you know, in earlier in the ingest process, uh, we have projects coming in at Sandbox that are incubating. Um, so, you know, we're we're looking for more clarity on uh, you know how we direct fo uh, folks coming in, uh, whether we uh, encourage folks to uh, you know start with just um, uh, Sandbox and, and and you know not. Uh, push ahead, uh, you know, to incubating, or you know, when it is uh, you know appropriate for um, a new project coming into the CNCF to peg in. Um, so you know, a lot of that uh, work is is uh, getting put onto the um, things now. Uh, we're happy to to do that, but uh, um, you know, we need we need guidance and. Um, you know, we're particularly interested in looking for a robust uh, no, like how do we, you know, rapidly sort of get folks to, uh, um, you know, a, a decision point. Um, as I'm looking at uh, April, we're talking about, uh, you know, potentially, uh, um, you know, having uh, a theme uh, and this might end up, you know, with all the craziness of, uh, uh, coronavirus and COVID-19 uh, fun. Uh, it might might be more reasonable to, to uh, peg it into to, to May, um, but you know, going through a, a, a thematic um, you know set of meetings where we're uh, you know inviting uh, projects CNTF and not uh, around identity and uh, you know really. Uh, you know, shifting from, um, you know, having sort of ad hoc, uh, you know, projects come and, you know, present, uh, um, you know, as, as it, it arises to, um, you know, in a particular period, we're, you know, diving deep on a topic uh, and, you know, coalescing some of our uh, context and, and um information around that so uh considering identity if you uh um you know for, for that uh initial uh wave and if you have any suggestions for uh projects or folks that uh you know you, you'd like to to hear from um you know very interested in, in getting feedback on that i'll create an issue around it okay thank you dan so it doesn't appear that there's any PRs beyond for discussion or anything requiring chair approval. So at this point, uh, let's just open the floor. If anyone has any questions or wants to address uh, people on the call, now's your chance. So follow, this is Underwood, following up on uh, Dan's solicitation there. So do we have a official liaison with Distributed Identity Foundation? No, we don't. Uh, so uh, Sarah's also been uh, 
um, uh, engaged in Boston and, um, you know, had uh, plugged into that, but uh, we definitely do not have, uh, you know, someone on the inside of SIG security that is, um, you know, interested in engaging there. Um, there's a bit of a, uh, you know, interesting sort of philosophical um, journey that I expect there where, um, you know, a lot of the larger sort of corporate, uh, um, you know, side of things are less interested in, in this. Um, so, you know, finding sponsorship, uh, you know, from a major corporation that is going to enable that um is you know maybe not going to to happen um so you know if we, if we find somebody that's uh, interested in um in joining and and uh, participating um uh, i'd love to you know to have um you know more more engagement and uh, a counterbalance to um you know our large corporate members got it so i'll put this in the notes so that um our note taker doesn't have to fill this out uh, so I only had attended one meeting, but it's a Microsoft guy leading it, and he's extremely disciplined, almost to the brink of hostility to uh, managing the time when they meet for an hour. They get a lot done in an hour. Um, it is kind of blockchain centric, but they're holding that implementation design stuff at bay at this point and trying to work on a spec, which I think is going to be fruitful at some point. Um, the NIST people are interested in this from a federation point of view. So I mentioned the liaison thing to them, which basically just meant they put it in the notes that somebody thought that might be a good idea. Nothing official was set up, but you know, I, I think it looks like this would be one of the useful things and not because of who they are, just, but because of the people that are running the show. Yeah. So I'll put it in the notes. Great. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, I put a note for you to do that, Mark. Thank you for that. I'm curious, do you consider, uh, like I'm I'm from VMware and if I join at the Harbor assessment, do you consider this as a conflict because Harbor is like not a VMware project but a CNCF project, I don't know, just curious. So we spec'd out the conflicts a while back. It's in the security reviewer um, under the assessment guide. I think it's specified that, that that's a soft conflict. I believe that basically you just have to say that you're from VMware, but you don't directly work on the project and you would still be able to do the review. Thank you. Yeah. I, I believe the only blocker that a soft conflict is, is that you can't be a lead reviewer is my understanding. Yep, I think that's right. So is that a common criteria, soft versus hard conflicts? Hard conflicts, it's a no-go versus soft, uh, just has to be noted or documented in advance? Yeah, so, so we defined this in the, um, the assessment guide. I, I'm gonna paste a link and uh, linking to it. So basically, I think we defined that uh, half conflicts you can't be a lead reviewer, but um, soft conflicts you can be a regular reviewer. Sorry for. Hard oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, okay. Hard conflicts you can't be a reviewer. Soft conflicts you can be a lead. Uh, you you can't be a lead reviewer but you can be a regular versus lead reviewer on a soft conflict. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, we still have a four or five minutes, four hard stop. Are there any other topics anyone wants to raise? Okay. Thanks everyone for joining today. Stay healthy and have a great rest of your day. Hey all, thank you. Thank you for uh, you allowing us to come and talk to you guys. Have a great day. Good to have you. Okay. Thank, thank you, Michael. Thank thank you. Michael. Thank you. Very interesting. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody.